For this video, I'm going to show you the elbow and wrist bony landmarks that you need for the level four course or just for general knowledge. Or if you're a physio or an osteopath and you can't learn me bony landmarks, anyone can watch these videos. So the first thing I'm going to draw is, and I do happen to have some bones next to me to point out some bits and pieces as we go. I'm going to draw the bottom of the humerus. And at the bottom of the humerus, let's just show, can you see this big lumpy bit here? So with the hand in a supine position, face up, it will be on the inside of the arm. And that's what you know as your funny bone. So when you bang that bit there, that's the bit that's quite sensitive because of the ulnar nerve that runs around it. So at the elbow, there is a bigger roundy bit like that. And on the outside, it's not quite so big. And then you've got your condyles that are within the joint like so so the bottom of the humerus i've got a medial epicondyle and a lateral epicondyle the thing the bone that makes the actual elbow joint for as a hinge joint for flexion and extension is the ulna so the ulna it's quite hard to draw it in a 2d position but i want to say the ulna is quite a wide bone at the top and it forms the hinge joint now the ulna comes down and goes to the little finger side at the wrist here so it's quite big and chunky at the top and it comes down and it's a bit smaller at the bottom so just underneath that wrist joint line i want to draw the bottom of the ulna which has a little pointy bit on the side can you see that little pointy bit there okay and what i've just shown you or drawn is that little pointy bit here can you see that so that's the ulna styloid process so the ulna comes down the arm like so, goes quite oops, skinny at the bottom, probably a bit straighter than that, I just went over a vein. <laughs> so we've got the ulna that makes the hinge joint, there we go. The other one I'm going to draw is the radius. Now the radius is smaller at the top, and if we have a look on this bone here, the skeleton, you can see it's a pivot joint. So it's the radius that pivots and does the turning, but at the bottom, look how wide it is here. Okay, so that forms the main wrist joint with the radius. So we we'll draw that as a wider bone. Oops, take my lid off. There we go. And then we've got that little sticky out bit at the bottom called the radial styloid. So it's quite small at the top. We've got the head of the radius that does the pivoting. And then as it comes down the arm here, it gets wider towards the bottom. Okay, so the two bones. Um, I'm not an artist, so if you do think that is slightly wrong, I do apologise, but it's really just to show you the bony landmarks. So we've got the radial head, we've got the radial styloid process, we've got the ulnar styloid process, we've got this hinge joint here, and from the humerus we've got the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle. Now what I will draw in in green is the soft tissue, this soft tissue is called the annular ligament. The annular ligament goes from the ulna, it wraps around the head of the radius. Okay, just making a mess with my green pen. Now imagine that to go around the radial head and then around the back and attach. So it's like a ring, like so, where the head of the radius will turn in. And if we have a look back, yeah you see that it would be follow my finger and thumb it holds the head of the radius in it's, it's a tight um, ligament that goes around there so that's the annular ligament let's move down to the actual wrist itself so the wrist bones are the eight bones of the wrist called the carpals we can see a wrist joint line there so there is a bit of a space but for level four course we need to be able to identify from the little finger side at that wrist joint line, nearly where the crease is, there's a tiny little bone that you feel like the size of a pea. So that little bone there, have a look on here, is the pisiform. Let's just see how far it sticks out. Yeah, the pisiform. Very close to that is another little bone that sticks out. So we've got the pisiform here, pisiform here. and then if I come up about a centimetre and in a centimetre, there's another little hook of bone like so, the one I've just pointed out, that's called the hook of hamate. The hook of hamate sits on the hamate bone, which is a bit wider, but it lies deeper down into there. 
Now, if I'm drawing nerves on, I would draw the ulnar nerve that comes all the way down and it goes through that tunnel called the Tunnel of Guyon. Okay, and then it goes down to the little finger, the outside edge of the ring finger. So that little pathway holds the ulnar nerve. The other bone that we need, especially for level four, is in here. And if you have a look at mine, okay, if you can zoom in there, can you see that indentation? Okay, can you see that there? So I've got this tendon for my thumb. There's another tendon for my thumb here, and it's in between the two, and it's called the anatomical snuff box. If you poke in there, um, my client on the couch, let's just pull your thumb away. That's it. So we've got the two tendons here, and just go between those and relax. Okay, now I've sunk in, and I'm just going to draw it as a bit of a square, because again, it's 2D on the skin. But that is the location for the scaphoid bone. Scaphoid bone is the most easily broken bone in the wrist. But if I was to draw the two tendons either side of it, we've got the abductor, um, the flexor polycus longus, and the abductor polycus. They're either side. So the pink things there are the tendons. The black is the scaphoid bone. So we've got scaphoid. We've got pisiform. We've got the hook of hamate. Um, turn it over this way. And I'm going to have to, because all my bones have disappeared again as I drew them on the other side. Let's have a little feel here. So at the bottom, we've got the radius. And there's a ridge of bone on the radius that I'm feeling now. I'm going to draw it like so and show you on this model. Okay, have a look on this model here. Can you see that ridge of bone there? Okay, that's called Lister's tubercle. Lister's tubercle, and again, it is a hook for one of the uh, uh, extensor polycus longus muscle here that goes around the top. Is that everything we need for level four? I'm thinking we've got the epicondyles. Um, the other thing, and I'm gonna have to get my client to show a bit of flexibility here. That might be a problem. Okay, just going to move that there. And if you can just move your arm over your head, like so. Are you okay? Just that position, mm -hmm. just for a few minutes. So now we've got the point of the elbow. <coughs> if you come around this way, you can now see the epicondyles. So if I draw the uh, humerus from this position, go around that bony bit there, go around that bony bit there. There's an indentation. Medial epicondyle lateral epicondyle and this bony bit here what we know is our elbow is actually the end of the ulna like so so that bit there is called the olecranon process or olecranon depends where you studied okay so the um olecranon process and the humerus that forms the actual elbow joint the humor ulna joint Okay, I think that's that's it for the bony landmarks. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please press subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.